Welcome to the Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. It is my goal in this episode to help you to see the completed vision. I know that everybody struggles with this a little bit. They struggle with creating that mold in their inner thoughts that they are able to manifest and replicate in the exterior world. You must see the completed vision or the divine vision as Neville Goddard likes to refer to it. The secret, Goddard says, is how to keep that divine vision in times of trouble. When I keep the divine vision, even in times of trouble and things are all denying that it could ever happen, He is working, the depth of my own being is working from the model. I supply the model. I want this, that, and the other. I dare to assume that I have it. Having assumed that I have it, it is entirely up to me to hold that model from which he works. You must see the completed vision. As it says in Proverbs, where there is no vision, the people perish. Picture an acorn on the forest floor. It's a small, leathery, cup-like shell containing an even smaller seed. A seed that, given the right conditions, will emerge into a mighty oak. It seems so normal, so natural, that a giant tree could come from a tiny seed. We rarely question the impossible physics of such a feat. I ask you where, for example, in that tiny seed is the stuff of an oak stored and the factory to produce it? Where are the blueprints, the brain, the matrix, the intricate network of intelligence necessary to transform the tiny oak seed into the mythical oak. For many, science has not yet fully explained how such things happen. Even the theory of evolution seems incomplete when we consider the complexity that emerges from a few particles of carbon material, which are really just stardust. So where is the oak before it emerges through the acorn? You could easily argue that there is no oak as a singular something, that it's the random result of many smaller somethings. It's just I've struggled with this dilemma on my journey going back and forth between answering the deeper call of vision to becoming impatient and using visualization to manifest what I wanted, only to run into the same problems I had before, just at a higher level. Years ago, when I was feeling stuck in a certain financial bracket, I worked intensely with many of the traditional tools of manifestation that I've shared on this channel to expand my income and lifestyle, complete with a bigger car, bigger house, bigger monthly budget. My efforts were successful and I felt great, but it was only momentary. Underneath it all, I had not realized the true vision for my life. I was just attracting more stuff based on my limited self-image. Soon enough, my unresolved issues came out bringing the same stress and financial worries just at a higher income level. In fact, it was more stressful because now I had more money, relationships, and responsibilities to deal with. The inner structures had not been strengthened and couldn't handle the heavier load. I had changed the superficial picture of my world, but I remained fundamentally the same. I was overwhelmed, so I decided to slow down and spend more time meditating and journaling again, going back to the basics. And as I became still, 
in the midst of one crisis after another, I discovered a deep impulse, a deep intuition, a deep knowing, a more authentic dimension of myself trying to emerge, which I had suppressed as my fear of lack and sense of inadequacy drove me to artificially manifest what I thought I needed to be secure and feel worthy. It took a degree of faith and a willingness to let my life fall apart in order for it to fall together at a higher level. It was scary. This didn't mean that my life had to fall apart, just that I was willing to let it. I had to let go of attachment of my ideas of what should or shouldn't be. I was finally able to answer the call of my deeper vision. I became more aligned with my authentic self, bringing with it not only greater abundance, but also a greater sense of peace and purpose. I've had many clients come to me after visualizing themselves into new relationships, better looking bodies, bigger houses, or more money, all of which could have been looked at as successful manifestations only to discover that their real purpose wasn't being fulfilled by these outer trappings, leaving them more exhausted and disillusioned. They'd gotten what they wanted, but not what they truly needed. Each time they were willing to surrender the deeper vision within them. Additionally, they were able to do the work of becoming congruent with it. Their life was taken to a new level. The pressure we feel to keep up with the neighbors and the complex facades we build to support this fake success, this imitation of success, becomes so much a part of our identity. It can truly feel like our whole world would have to collapse in order for it to get back on track. But that doesn't have to be your story. While it's true that we must let go of the old, sometimes cherished parts of our inner and outer life to let the new emerge and awaken, just as the acorn must release the protective shell to become an oak, and the caterpillar must release its familiar form to grow wings. When we tap into the greater vision of our life and live from that deeper place, the joy, inspiration, and adventure of awakening far outweighs the temporary birth pains. Visualization and other manifestation techniques like vision boards and affirmations are useful tools, but they're never enough. With them alone, you can only fulfill your ego's desire, not your soul's destiny nor for that matter the higher purpose of a project, relationship, or business. This approach keeps you stuck in a cycle of visualization, manifestation, visualization, manifestation, round and round, never finding peace or satisfaction. In order to go beyond that, you must now move from visualization to vision, from mind-projected images based on limited self concepts to the divine ideas planted in your soul to your divine vision imagination is the key imagination is god imagination creates reality imagination is often hailed as one of the greatest tools of innovation even einstein said imagination is more important than knowledge how could we not agree with that imagination is a powerful faculty that allows us to take charge of our thoughts and gain some control over our experience. Mastering this faculty helps us realize that our environment doesn't determine our destiny and permits us to move from passive victim to active creator. But imagination, as we often understand and use it, is limited by our experience, self-concepts, or the collective beliefs of our culture 
Therefore, it can only build on what's already known. It's just a new twist on the content already in our consciousness. It's like rearranging the furniture in a room that's too small for your purposes or built on a foundation that can no longer support you. You may arrive at a more pleasing, even wildly creative and different arrangement, but you haven't changed the foundation or made the room any larger. And whatever problems of scale and scope you had before will still be there once you get over the novelty of your new design. To realize your full emergent potential and your purpose, your starting point must be outside the room itself. Although Einstein may have used imagination as a springboard, he ultimately went beyond the mind and tapped into something deeper in every area where humanity has taken a major leap forward. This has been the case. A natural response to this from you might be, that's not true. I can imagine myself flying in a spaceship to other galaxies and that's something I've never experienced. I've never seen anybody else do that. But consider this. The ability to imagine otherworldly possibilities isn't necessarily transformational or evolutionary. In fact, if you study many works of science fiction, you'll see that although they have imagined life in the future, in many cases, the protagonists are still suffering from the same problems we experience today, if not worse. No actual evolution taking place. Imagination may take us on a journey to the edge of our known self, before a true vision that evolves us to the next level, whether personally, professionally, or societally, we must cross the border of our conditioned mind and enter an uncharted frontier that can only be navigated through the sight of your soul. It's a soul sense. What is this soul sense, this inner perceptual faculty that allows you to see and tap into true vision? I've heard it called many things, intuition, inner guidance, higher wisdom, the higher self. Think of it as imagination 2.0, the next level of imagining, divine imagining. Whereas imagination allows you to select from your database of stored knowledge and experience to create new expressions, this Imagination 2.0 allows you to tap into the field of unprecedented ideas seeking to emerge, ideas beyond your experience, beyond all experience, the perfect prototypes unique to you. If it's a better relationship, your soul yearns for activating your new imagination, your higher form of imagination will make you receptive to that part of you already in love, making you a magnet for a partner who matches your soul's highest ideals. This level of imagining tunes into the multiverse itself. If it's a project you're working on, you can call on this multiversal imagination to reveal the project's true essence and greater potential, as well as the means to achieve these often in ways that surprise you, stretch you, and exceed what you have imagined. If it's a business you're trying to grow, go deep within your imagination to that next level of imagining. And it will not only help you discern its next stage of evolution, but also help you position it to be an evolutionary force in its industry. Tuning in to all the versions of yourself now and in the future, accessing the Akashic field, the record of all experiences in all realities, and knowing the patterns and the molds created ahead of you. And unlike some manifestation techniques that focus on changing your external world, Imagination 2.0 is an inside-out process that transforms you into the person you must be to handle the next phase of growth into the fourth density new earth with ease, grace, and integrity. This unique soul faculty of a deeper imagination is a natural part of us, an ability anyone can develop, and something nearly everyone has experienced at one time or another. 
It is more readily activated in moments when you're relaxed and you're receptive in the alpha or theta state. In particular, feeling a sense of love and gratitude or awe or when a crisis has forced you to your knees. The mind stops. Something else opens up. A second mind. Imagining from this second mind and you have a flash of insight or a solution to a problem without a process of deliberation. But it's not necessary to wait until you hit rock bottom or have a mountaintop moment, a sudden epiphany. Through active practice, you can consciously cultivate your deeper level of imagining, ultimately making way for your vision to shine through. There are many ways to access this inner source of inspiration from meditation and prayer to chanting and automatic writing. And I've discussed all of these on the podcast. The clues to who you truly are and why you're alive are everywhere inside and outside. The key to activating this unique imaginal faculty that takes you to the next level of imagining is in becoming interested in that guidance and developing a more observant, receptive, and reflective mind. Another key is a willingness to stay in a creative, non-judgmental, childlike space. This is a sacred inner environment where the editor, the critic, the analyst are not allowed. I learned this through art. Sometimes you just have to get the paint on the canvas and you cannot judge it. You must continue to be in this creative space at least not until you've expressed a complete version of your vision that inspires you. The following exercises are designed to help you in this task, to get you started. Here is a simple practice to begin opening to this higher vision. The first would be to activate your imagination 2.0. Close your eyes and take a few slow, deep breaths. Breathing in. And as you exhale, allow yourself to release all the tensions in your body, all the issues of the day, and all your concerns for the future. Let go and sink into this moment. Be aware of your breath as it flows in and out. Either by gently focusing your attention on your nostrils or on your rising and falling abdomen. Don't control it. Allow the breath to do what it wants. Sometimes breathing deeply, other times more shallowly. Just remain aware and relaxed. And as you settle in, set your intention for this exercise and this episode. It doesn't matter what goal you have, whether it's to manifest a job or find a new relationship, heal your body, or make more money. The purest intention for the purpose of this work is to make conscious contact with your spirit, to awaken the truth of your being. This is most effective because it seeks nothing but self-actualization and therefore carries no resistance. Whereas an intention to get something seemingly separate from us pulls us back into the fundamental duality, this work aims to heal. Feel the vibration of your intention. Take a deep breath and allow that feeling to expand, filling your whole body. Then another one. Allowing this energy to fill the space you're in. Until you're completely enveloped in its warm glow. Release all your ideas of what you should or shouldn't be. There's no right or wrong way to do this. Just trust your intuition.
with your intention firmly established, you can move to the next stage of this exercise where you prompt your higher consciousness with questions about your vision. We'll just focus on one theme for now, but you can always add to this as you become more comfortable with this exercise. Ask yourself, what is the vision of my life? What is the divine or highest idea of my life? What does it look like or feel like? What is its essence? Remain alert. Wait. Watch. Listen. Become aware of whatever images, sounds, or sensations arise. Sometimes what comes up will be literal. You will see images that explicitly portray your vision in the world. Other times your experience may be more symbolic and a connection will be unclear. Some people see images in technicolor. Others will have a more physical, sensual experience. You might only get a feeling or a vibration. Pay attention, but don't judge. There's no better or worse, no right or wrong. Whatever comes up is part of the process. If you find yourself drifting, planning your grocery list, worrying about the bills, Gently bring your attention back to the breath. Don't be dismissive of anything. In this exercise, even seemingly external distractions might be synchronistic clues from your soul. I've had car honks and bird caws when I've done this exercise that linked exactly to what I needed for my divine vision. You can repeat the questions as many times as you like or feel is necessary in order to elicit a genuine experience. As insights come through, you can open your eyes and take notes, or you can wait until after you meditate. Some people prefer to wait because opening their eyes and writing takes them out of the deep flow, out of that next level of imagination. Others find that if they wait, They forget what emerged, the same way dreams fade after you get up. Experiment with both ways. In any case, trust that what you need to receive and remember, you will. That even if you don't remember, there's valuable work being done in the deeper recesses of your consciousness. As you develop, you can add other questions or ask these basic questions in different ways. As long as your intention remains pure to have a deeper realization of who you truly are and the vision for your life and you practice it with some consistency, it will yield rich fruits. One resource I totally recommend is Michael Beckwith's Life Visioning that allows you to go even deeper into this visioning process. For some people, the vision of their life isn't easily coaxed out. It's because the vision isn't speaking to them, rather, that it's just been suppressed so long by rational thinking and cultural conditioning that they can't hear it anymore. This usually leads to two common questions. How can I tell what my real vision or purpose is? And how can I know what my soul really wants? And when answers begin to arise, they're often followed by another question. Is this my spirit or intuition or my ego speaking? The result is that we doubt the guidance, doubt ourselves. We doubt our imaginations and fear making the wrong choice. First of all, you can rarely make a wrong choice if you have the right intention. Even a wrong choice born of a sincere intention will lead you to learn and grow, strengthening your ability to listen to inner guidance and make better choices. We've been taught that the path to success is in doing all the right things, but how many people have failed by doing all the right things and succeeded by breaking all the rules? I'm not saying that developing skills and taking thoughtful action are not important, but intention is like the rudder beneath the water's surface. It's what really steers the ship. 
when faced with a choice of action. Instead of focusing on why you shouldn't do something, ask why you should or why you want to. As you tune into this part of yourself, you not only discover the layers of false motivation and begin to release them, you eventually hit that soft, glowing core where the why turns into the what. You discover that thing you are striving for. The thing that fuels your why is actually the very thing you're made of. You are already it. Remember, those strong desires to go out and achieve something are actually the something in you seeking to get out. So let's take some time to dig more deeply, to go on an archaeological expedition of your soul and see what's really buried there. Let's look at your desires and goals. All the things you want to have and achieve are clues to the larger vision trying to emerge. It's not that you will necessarily get all the things or that final picture will look the way you imagine. In fact, as you emerge, you'll discover that many of the things that you thought you wanted were just decoys. But because there is only one reality, even your false desires are guiding you to a deeper truth. As you bring greater awareness to these desires, you begin to crack open the hard shell of the ego and glimpse what's inside trying to get out. Are you ready for a breakthrough? First, create on a single page of paper two columns. On the left side, write down your desire or goal, and on the right, write down why you want it. And be honest, sometimes that's kind of hard. Start with the things you want most and work your way down. If the reason you want something is to get something else materially, add that new object to the desire column and write down why you want it in the other column. For instance, if you wrote, I want to make a million dollars, and in the why column you put to get a house, put to get a house in the desire column, and put why you want the house in the opposite column. Do this until you get a non-material reason in the right-hand column. For example, in terms of the house, you might put to feel secure. You've now distilled your desire to the feeling of security, which is the real goal. Now take a look at those reasons. Why do you want what you want? Do you see a pattern? Did you attribute the same why to more than one entry? Are your whys based on what you want from others? Or are they inner qualities? For example, let's say you wrote in your desire goal column, I want to be a successful author. Then in your why column you wrote, so people will love and respect me. You still haven't gotten down to the real why at your core. This entry also belongs in the desire goal column. Take the whys that depend on getting something from someone else, even if it's non-material, and put those in the desire goal column. Then write down why you want those, working with the entry, I want people to love and respect me. You might put in the why column, so that I will feel loved and respected, or so that I'll love and respect myself. Now that is a why you can work with, but something else important has occurred. You started out thinking that what you wanted was to be a successful author, have fame and fortune and gain the respect of others, but discovered that what you really want is to feel loved and respected. Feeling loved and respected is an inside job. It has nothing to do with anything outside of you. You and only you have the power to generate these feelings. Generating them is your real goal and the core of your vision. As you uncover the true motivation behind your desire to attain things, they begin to lose their luster, their irresistible pull. The more you come to understand that what you actually want is already within you, the less appeal the outer struggle has. When you understand that what you really are going for is self-love and acceptance, and you realize you can only find this on the inside, your journey both ends and finally begins. The resistance falls away and self-love and acceptance naturally emerge. This doesn't mean you should just stop taking action in the world. I get that so often. People think, okay, I don't have to do anything. Far from it. As a matter of fact, you'll become more productive 
because you'll know where your good really comes from and therefore won't be blocking it by projecting it onto someone or something else. All the false desires based on false motives fall away. And what remains is the true path you're meant to walk. On this path, you'll encounter tasks and you'll have goals and a grand purpose to be sure. But they will not be motivated by what you can get, but rather by what you're here to give. From this space, knowing that you already have everything you need within you, your actions unfold from a desire to share what you have and who you are. Not because you need to express yourself to feel the whole, but because your wholeness cannot help but express itself. Take a look at the list again. You should have a right-hand column, your whys, filled with qualities you want to embody within yourself. Along the way, you'll probably also discover some desires or goals that aren't attached to getting something from someone. For example, you may have written as a desire or goal, I want to share my gifts with the world. And in the why column, you may have genuinely written so people can benefit from them. This is an effective motivation. It's not created by your ego. It's not created at all. It is your very nature announcing itself. And that nature is always about giving, shining, sharing, serving, pouring forth that imprisoned splendor for no ulterior motive. Now, of course, there is a caveat. Sometimes we do have a hidden agenda and we're not willing to admit the reason that we're doing what we're doing. And if you look deeper and realize that the reason you want to give is to get approval or validation or recognition, then giving isn't the real goal. Activating the inner feeling of self-worth is. None of this is intended as a judgment on other types of motivation. There's a place for everything on the ladder of our evolution. There's a place for everything on our journey. But a motive that doesn't seek to get anything, a motive that is a core desire, won't perpetuate old wounds or keep you and those around you unconscious. It will have a liberating, illuminating, expanding effect on you and anyone it touches. It will also emerge free of the resistance that normally accompanies our ego's agenda. You should now have two sets of desires goals. On one hand, you know the material things you're after, the new business, the new house, the increased wealth, you name it, and that's all good. But you also have a list of inner goals and you're becoming increasingly aware of what you really want to feel. What you really want is primarily an inner experience, a quality of being such as self-love, confidence, security, freedom, and abundance. From this perspective, the phrase living a quality life takes on a whole new significance. So to reiterate, laying this inner foundation for your vision is not the end, it is the beginning. Upon this spiritual foundation, you'll build a house that storms of this world will not tear down. So let's try another exercise. In our last one, you open to your deepest vision. You didn't let your ego impose its ideas on it, and perhaps you were surprised, even shocked by what you discovered. In the past, you've probably designed visions based on what you want. With this new level of imagination, you've begun to discover the excitement of opening up to what wants you. Then, through the desires and goals process, you focused on the core values seeking to awaken within you. Now that you're more mentally limber and receptive, we're going to let you envision without limits the life of your dreams. From this space, your mind is less of a creator and more of a channel for your true divine vision. So take a moment now and get comfortable. Close your eyes. Take a few deep breaths. Cleansing breaths. And with each inhalation, imagine you are breathing light into your heart. With each exhalation, imagine you're exhaling anything that no longer serves you. Relax into this moment, releasing any concern for the future and any residue from the past. Recall a time in your life when you felt really connected, 
any moment that activates a positive feeling of vibration of love inspiration aliveness just let yourself go there be in it feel it again then breathe and as you exhale let that feeling expand to fill your body with that energy feel it and from this greater activation and receptivity allow yourself to open up to the highest vision of your life not the vision you think you should could or have to live not merely the vision you think is practical logical or reasonable give yourself permission to see and feel what you truly deeply desire if you knew you were totally supported and had all the resources you needed the talents gifts abilities and support what would that vision be who would you be what would you do how would you contribute or create who would you support or serve what would it look like feel free to include any of the life structures your health wealth work relationships spirituality personal development and service allow yourself to see and feel the highest possible vision paint the picture see yourself doing and being in a way that truly inspires you hold nothing back see people congratulating you honoring you praising you wherever you go you meet with love and support recognition and reward breathe into that and let it expand if your self-talk starts saying things like who do you think you are how could you ever do that that's impossible thank it for sharing put it aside lock it outside of your space and go back to painting the vision in your vision studio remember the how will kill the what if you let it we're not going to allow that to happen today now ask yourself on a scale from zero to 100 if zero is somebody please put me out of my misery and 100 is omg i can barely stay in my body i'm so happy where does this vision fall on that scale how does this vision feel in your body right now in this moment when you imagine it if it's less than 100 ask what it would take to raise it 10 points on the scale if it's a 50 what would it take to be 60 and so on listen and add that element to the vision do this until you hit 100 until you can't imagine a better life if you get stuck think about other aspects of your vision for example you've been imagining your work add the element of health or wealth or relationships until you hit 100 or if you are intentionally focusing on a single area like intimate relationships tune into different aspects of that this is crucial because it's easier to activate your deeper imaginational resources when we have escape velocity that is a vision that lifts us out of the gravitational pull of everyday normal thinking than it is to try to achieve something that only mildly revs you up in fact without this rocket fuel we're just going to be pulled right back down to earth
take a moment to journal if you have to. What came up during this vision process? Pay particular attention to the qualities you were feeling and the qualities you were being. The next step is to reduce your vision to a powerful statement that focuses your mind and heart on the details that matter most. This potent acknowledgement of your vision is something you can gauge everything you do against in order to keep you on course. Without such a tool, it can be difficult to plot and stay your course. It's easy to get caught up in the daily minutia of life, the to-do list mentality. Only discover when the sun goes down that you haven't accomplished anything of significance. Or you might climb the ladder of success only to discover that it's leaning against the wrong wall or no wall at all. To craft this powerful lodestone, which will guide you like a compass toward your true north, you'll utilize the data you've collected throughout this episode. First of all, choose a few verbs that resonate, inspire, or excite you, that represent your core values. For example, to play, to serve, to build, to enlighten, to help, and so on. In the context of your personal or professional life, decide who or what you will be engaging with or contributing to. Next, what is your ultimate goal for the people or groups you will be serving or helping? What is the value, benefit, or end result you want to create? Now take your responses from what we've asked now and combine them to create the skeleton of your vision statement. And once you have that, you can flesh it out using other insights you've gleaned from explorations in this episode. For example, you could say as a writer, speaker, and teacher, I create projects that hold up a mirror to humanity, inspiring individuals to heal their past, awaken their full potential, and fulfill their destiny, creating a world that works for everyone. By conducting business with honesty, integrity, enthusiasm, and generosity, I provide a safe and productive atmosphere for people to make mistakes, take risks, create and perform in ways that exceed their expectations and grow in ways they never thought possible. Your vision statement doesn't have to be long, but it should be clear and vivid enough to create a movie in your mind that can motivate you into action. Don't worry if you don't feel that it perfectly captures every nuance of your intention. It's something you try on like a new coat. If after wearing it for a while it makes you itch or sweat or feel like you showed up to the party overdressed, get a new one. You can also distill this into a mantra, a sound, a word, or phrase that contains the energetic essence of your vision. It's like a reduction in cooking, where everything but what is most essential is cooked away and just one dollop of it explodes with flavor. This is the technique that Anthony Norvell would give. He would have these long statements like, I give to help the world and to see the world improve and find love and happiness. He would say that, and then he would say, I give. Keeping all of the energy of that entire sentence with those first two words. That is a technique that you can use. Think about your vision statement and see if you can reduce it to just a few words to form a mantra that can take you into a deeper connection with the essence of your purpose. Tapping into your vision and creating these navigation tools is a major step in the direction of your dreams being fulfilled, but it's only the beginning. What you need next is a daily practice to activate this visionary vibration and a clear plan rooted in these core values. Together, this integrates the inner and outer work into a cohesive strategy that takes you from living life by accident to living on purpose. I've seen many lives transformed by processes like this. One individual who did this work opened up to the larger vision of his life and went from being homeless, alone, deeply depressed, and taking 30 prescription pills per day to living in his own home, getting engaged, and reducing his need for medication to just one or two pills. Had he been left to his mind's preconceived and limited beliefs of what was possible, the best he could have imagined was being pain-free and off the streets. The idea of being drug-free and married to the woman of his dreams was just too far outside his self-image. 
Another was on the verge of bankruptcy, with his banker telling him he had to sell his business and home. But within a few months of tapping into the deeper vision for his life, he had more business than he could handle and launched a healing center, a coaching practice, which had been his deeper calling. From where he'd started, the best he could imagine was improving his current business and getting out of debt. The possibility of actually flourishing and being a powerful leader in the world was outside his present paradigm. But it wasn't outside his potential when he opened up to that space beyond the mind into the second mind. Another person I coached opened up to the energy of her visions in addition to healing her failing kidney she turned her work and family around completely she had only hoped to heal her body which is no small thing but it turned out that her physical condition was an expression of a mental emotional issue and an invitation to a deeper spiritual realization of her true nature if you had asked her to create a vision of where her life could or should go it never would have included the total transformation of her work and family life because her current mindset was too contracted around her physical pain to see the great potential and purpose beyond that using this work people have been guided to reconnect with abandoned relationships and rebuild broken families businesses and nonprofits have developed into worldwide organizations some have felt truly hopeless having been inspired by profound insights and a deeper connection to the divine. When we tap into our true vision, the possibilities are endless because true vision is not something you make up. It's something you are. It's your true nature and essence, the seat of your soul and the source of your power beyond what the world thinks about you, beyond even what you think about yourself. When you're ready, if you feel open to, Share with me your true vision. For some, they'd rather not share that vision, but they want to keep it to themselves. And for some, they want to share that vision. But in any case, I'm here to support your vision because my vision includes in supporting your vision and seeing you shine like a star. You can find all episodes of The Reality Revolution at therealityrevolution.com. I'd love it if you checked out my art. Got lots of new pieces. You can find it at www.newearth.art and welcome to the Reality Revolution.